Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another video. Before we get started, I want to let you know about an exciting thing that's happening next week. I'm going to be doing live streaming, uh, courtesy of Adobe, the great software maker. They're flying me out to San Francisco to do three consecutive days of live streaming, 90 minutes per day, drawing digitally using an iPad Pro and Adobe software, drawing digitally for the very first time for all the world to see. Did I really agree to do this? Yes, I did. And you can watch it live next Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That's May 3rd, May 4th, May 5th. It's going to be at www.twitch.tv slash adobe. And the time every day will be the same, 12 noon to 1.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You'll have to work out what that means in your individual time zone. I'll put all of that info down here in the info box so that you can uh, copy it out and hopefully some of you can watch live as I do a streaming event for the first time. Pretty excited about that. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and get into this video in which I'm going to be giving you my eight top pieces of advice relating to naming your own characters. <laughs> All right, so I always like people to have something to look at while I talk to them in videos like this, and I'm going to be working then on this illustration uh, inspired by trips that I've made to Japan, a guy making his way up the steps to this temple way at the top of the hill. But really the focus of this video is going to be on uh, giving advice relating to naming your characters. Now the first one is a pretty obvious one. I'll just go ahead and put it out there. Make use of websites like babynames.com. Uh, yes, you know, people who are naming their children, not so different. People naming their characters for their stories. You you want to have access to a lot of different names. Uh, you know, the, it'll provide the meanings and so forth. Um, and so, yeah, just in case uh, no one had thought about that as a possibility, I want to make sure I get that in the video right at the beginning. Now, a little more interesting to me, maybe, is this next uh, piece of advice, and probably uh, my most important piece of advice relating to this subject. Pay attention to the feelings and or images that certain names convey. The sound can be more important than the meaning. Uh, now, uh, unfortunately, we start to stray into the realm of what some people would call stereotypes here. But uh, certainly, you know, a name like Hank, for example, uh, has this kind of down-home feeling to it, uh, average everyday guy kind of feeling to it, whereas, um, you know, certain names sound a little more regal or aristocratic, like Alexander. Now, I know there's people watching this video who are named Alexander, and they might say, well, hey, I'm not a rich person. That doesn't mean that I'm rich. And of course it doesn't. But when you're naming characters, you want to just sort of think about the feeling, I think is the main uh, piece of advice here. And, uh, you know, I had a character that was supposed to be kind of a wealthy, hot shot kind of a character uh, in uh, Mickey, or not Mickey Falls, well, I can't remember my own <laughs> books, Brody's Ghost, had a character, and so I looked around at names that made me think of sort of wealthy sounding names. I ended up choosing the name Landon, uh, I wonder if anyone watching this video is named Landon. It seems like a fairly unusual name, but Landon James. You know, that was my effort at a name that would convey wealth. Now, the I don't mean to give so much specific advice about choosing rich-sounding names. This is just an example about how... You know, you start with the feeling, the image that you're trying to convey uh, relating to the character, and then work your way out from there. Um, Interestingly, I think this expands beyond the idea of names and goes more into almost the realm of poetry, uh, focusing on the sounds of words and how they make you feel. Um, and uh, I do think that that's a key to good writing, sometimes is to break away, and don't be so locked in on the meaning uh, of a name or a word, but allow yourself to just sort of hear the sound that it makes. Uh, for example, the name Melanie, right? The name Melanie is f composed of very soft sounds, right? You've got the uh, that L in there, and it, it just rolls gently out of your mouth, and so that is going to produce a certain feeling or image, maybe. Uh, you might want to consider that, you know, there's a reason why <laughs> the, the bad guy evil, you know, uh, overlord, mother, uh, nightmarish witch character is probably not going to be named Melanie because it doesn't sound 
tough. It doesn't have those tough sounding um, syllables in it. Uh, I think I've mentioned this character before that I created for my uh, Akiko series, but I needed a bad guy. I named him Loza Throck. Uh, which is really almost kind of ridiculous. It's trying so hard to be a bad guy name. Loser Throck. <laughs> but the, you know, a name like Throck, you know, you get the TH, you get the you know, hard K sound at the end of it. Obviously, Throck gives us a different feeling than Melanie. So I would just encourage you to, to sort of stand back from the name and consider the sound of it, what it makes you uh, feel as you hear that name. Let's move on now to number three. Consider the possibility that your character's name may end up being in the title of your project. Um, any of you who've watched my videos, you've heard me refer to Brody's Ghost. Well, Brody is the name of the main character, and in a way, I started, believe it or not, with the word, word ghost. I knew I had a story that involved a ghost. I wanted the word ghost to be in the title, so I needed a name that had, a, I thought, that had a little echo of the word ghost, that O sound. Uh, I also wanted a name that had two syllables in it. Uh, more on that in a second. But the, my thinking was, uh, let's get a, a, a male name that has an O sound in it, uh, so that it can sort of repeat the O sound of the word ghost. So, uh, in the early days, I thought it might be a Japanese uh, story, or a story set in Japan. I, I was considering considering calling it Toshi's Ghost. But again, it had that O sound that was repeating from the uh, ghost. It could have been called Toby's Ghost. It, you know, uh, Anything that had an O in it, I thought, would have a fairly good role to it as a title. Um, interestingly, I do think the number of syllables in the name also contributes to a title rolling off your tongue. I was thinking about uh, the great story, Gulliver's Travels. Well, part of what makes that name roll so well is the three syllables of Gulliver, uh, with the stress falling, falling on the first syllable, Gulliver's Travels. It just rolls nicely. Uh, if he had chosen to call it Michael's Travels, <laughs> You know, Michael, maybe just a little too simple of a name, that's part of it. But even if you uh, invented a name like Guller's Travels, uh, there's this sort of clunky uh, rhythm. Guller's Travels. Gulliver's Travels rolls a little better. Now, some of you might say, well, wait a minute, yeah, this is just because we're used to the name Gulliver's Travels. That's why it sounds better. But, you know, even if you take a name like Anthony... Anthony's Travels. That, that pattern of the three-syllable name followed by uh, the two-syllable word just has a certain roll to it. Uh, it rolls off your tongue and it sounds nice. So anyway, uh, you may want to uh, consider the title and the name, not necessarily of your main character, doesn't have to be, sometimes it could be a different character in the story, but one of the characters in your story may be in the title, in which case you need to uh, keep that in mind as you develop the name. I don't know if that makes things easier or harder. <laughs> now I have to think of the title! But uh, anyway, something to keep in mind. It certainly has played a role uh, in many of my projects. Let's move on to number four here. Name your characters in contrast to one another. I generally am looking for names that sound quite different. Uh, in my uh, fantasy children's story, uh, uh, Akiko on the planet Smoo, I had to come up with a whole bunch of names all at once as the kind of crew, the main characters. And so it ended up being Akiko as the main character. Then we had Spuckler, Mr. Biba, Gax, and Poog. And, you know, all three or all four of those new names that I created after Akiko, which was the, you know, sort of determined as my main name, uh, none of them sound exactly the same or even similar at all. And I, I do think that that, you know, it helps to keep everyone straight uh, in your mind as a reader if there are distinctively different sounding names. For example, if I had a character named Christopher, I probably would not have a female character named Christine, uh, in the same story, even if you're spelling it different or whatever, they both have Chris at the root of it. You might as well just change one of those names. Uh, of course, there are exceptions to this, like Tweedledum and Tweedledee, uh, characters who are deliberately given similar names. Um, 
and you know by all means if that's the effect that you're going for uh, have at it um, but uh, I would normally want to have contrast in the names as I would want contrast in their personalities so that uh, readers don't have any trouble uh, separating them as they read this story. Now we get into the fun topic of fantasy names, which is to say invented names. Uh, an invented fantasy name can be created by taking real words and altering them even just slightly. I mentioned a moment ago Spuckler uh, in one of my first stories. That comes from the word swashbuckler. He was supposed to be a sort of swashbuckling pirates uh, type of a character, and so I just took swashbuckler and I took out the wash and it became spuckler. Uh, interestingly, just as a side note, I was contacted years later by a woman named Karen Spuckler. Uh, so it is apparently a real name. I wonder if it's a German name. It sounds like it could be. Karen Spuckler, she said, boy, how did you know the name Spuckler? And I said, I didn't. I thought I'd made it up. I, I was trying to invent something new. But that uh, is what can happen, you know, especially when you have names of just one or two syllables. You're bound to, uh, even when trying to create a name, come up with something that uh, is similar or exactly identical to something someone else has. Um, but what I was going to say is that um, uh, in stories like Star Wars or Harry Potter, I see a lot of names that are clearly meant to echo uh, real words. Uh, I always give as an example Slytherin in the Harry Potter stories. Slytherin clearly uh, is derived from uh, the word slither, which makes us think of snakes, it gives us a certain feeling. And this goes back to what I was saying about, you know, pay attention to the feeling that words give you. Um, and, you know, there's, a, again, the name, uh, the uh, the thought of snakes slithering is con contributing to that, but also just the sound of it, slither, you know, it makes your mouth do certain things. And uh, uh, that uh, you could argue just even abstract, in an abstract way, even if you didn't know the meaning of the word slither, you would get a certain feeling from it. Anyway, uh, and in Star Wars, it can become even more <laughs> almost ridiculous, like Skywalker, right? You know, so composed of the word sky and walker. Uh, clearly, George Lucas did not mind really just going for it and taking pre existing names and saying, hey, look, I can make it work. Uh, if it's a good enough character, uh, it won't seem ridiculous uh, in this story. And, uh, you know, like the, the calamari, isn't that one of the alien races that sort of looks like a squid? It's, it's sort of like a joke almost, you know, calamari, appetizer. <laughs> anyway, um, when you're creating a fantasy name, you don't have to completely come up with... Um, a brand new word that has never existed before. You can you can play around with existing words and uh, you know turn them into a name. I always thought that Darth Vader, the word Vader, is related to invade, like an invader. Um, not sure of that, but uh, anyway, that's uh, uh, one way of getting to a fantasy name. Now I got another piece of advice related to fantasy names. That is to say, invented names. Uh, when inventing a new name, try to choose a spelling that can only be pronounced one way. Now I'm going to set my uh, brush aside for a moment here and give you a specific example. Um, let's see if I can get this piece of paper here. If I were to be uh, inventing a, a new character and I wanted the character's name to be uh, Fief, let's say, an F sound followed by an E sound followed by another F sound, um, if I were to spell that as F-I-F, -F, some people might pronounce that as fif, and then I would have to be telling them again and again, no, it's pronounced fief. Now, this starts to stray into different languages, you know, like if you're French or you're uh, from, you know, speaking a different Romance language or any other language around the world, uh, you, this whole piece of advice may uh, be not relating directly to you and how you would be in, inclined to pronounce things. But for an American, uh, they might accidentally pronounce it as fif instead of fief. Now, you could also spell it like this, f-i-e-f, -F, and say this should be pronounced fief. But again, some people might pronounce it as fife, and then you're struggling correcting them all the time. 
So, if I were to give the name Fief, I would spell it like this. F-E-E-F. -E -E Fief. Uh, this double E sound just simply cannot be pronounced any other way. Now, again, I'm not saying that this is a good name. It's, I'm, I'm giving this as an example about uh, spelling a fantasy invented name. I personally am very frustrated by people mispronouncing the names of my invented characters, so I try to choose a spelling that almost forces them to pronounce it the way I hear it in my head. So, see, and for what it's worth, there's my little piece of advice relating to the spelling uh, of the character that you have invented. Well, we're getting closer to the end of uh, this video. Let me take just a little break and maybe try to continue along with my progress here. I know some people like to see a little more <laughs> advancement in the illustration process. I'm going to do that all in time lapse and we'll be back with the last two pieces of advice. All right, well, hopefully people will feel they saw enough uh, progress over the course of this video. It's time now, though, to get on to the uh, final two pieces of advice. Number seven, you may choose to name uh, a character in honor of someone you know. Now, I haven't done this so much over the years, but I certainly did it in a big way when I came up with the name uh, of the main character in Miki Falls. My wife is named Miki, and I decided to name that character in honor of her. So, uh, for all time, we've got my wife's name <laughs> on the cover of these books, and I feel real happy about that. But uh, I, I could imagine a person just filling a story with uh, characters' names that are named in tribute um, to friends, relatives, different people like that. So that's certainly uh, an option. I don't know if you should feel that you ask their permission, or do you just go ahead and do it? I'm not sure what the protocol is. Let me know if you have any thoughts on that. Um, but that brings us now to the final piece of advice in this video. And uh, as always, I try to choose something that kind of sums up my attitude about this whole topic. And uh, it is this. In the end, remember that an interesting character is vastly more important than choosing the right name. And you see I put the word right in... Uh, quotation marks there. Is there one right name for a character? I'm not sure there is, uh, and I do sometimes wonder if the aspiring writer, the beginning writer, uh, is getting a little too consumed with this whole idea of naming the characters, when really your uh, attention should be focused on the dialogue, uh, the storytelling. You could honestly have a character named John Smith and uh, I suppose there may even be a John Smith out there watching. I do apologize if this is yet another example of someone using your name as an example of a uh, very common or ordinary sounding name. But indeed, you could have a character named John Smith, and if you've made that your John Smith really fascinating as a character, no one's going to care about what you named him. It's all about who the character really is. So in a funny way, I guess I'm ending this video by saying, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> That's not true. But it, maybe it doesn't matter quite as much as you imagine it does. Uh, the naming of characters, I suppose there are some authors, I've never really met authors who contended that the naming of the character was the crucial thing. I personally just feel it's all about the storytelling. Um, and, and, and I think sometimes uh, it, there's an interesting comparison to be made with band names. Some of my favorite bands have, I think, sort of lousy names, you know? I'm like, why did you guys choose such a bad name uh, or a name that doesn't sound cool? Um, but the truth is, again, it's, it's about the music, it's not about the name. Uh, and I think the same could be said, in a way, uh, for the characters in your story. Make sure that you are um, obsessing over the writing of the character, not so much over the naming of the character. But that kind of brings us to the end of this video. Let me go ahead and grab my books. So as to thank anyone who has supported me by getting them, Brody's Ghost, Brody, two syllables, one syllable. <laughs>
<laughs> sorry, Minky Falls, my graphic novels, uh, as well as The Realism Challenge, my book about hyper-realistic illustration techniques, and of course Mastering Manga and Mastering Manga 2, my books about how to draw manga. Always super, super appreciative of anyone who supports me by getting those books, but let's go ahead and lay down this brush. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful, and I'll be back with another one real soon.